Big time public service reminder here. Always. Always. Oh yeah, this is one of those things where you can actually take something that I'm saying to the bank. This is good info. Always, 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 without fail. As soon as you wrap your pickup cavities, always drill your wire hole. So I forgot that my bridge pickup wrap is not as deep as the neck pickup route and I started my hole at the bottom of the neck pickup route and drilled underneath the floorboard of my bridge pickup there. That's not the way to do it. So I just came back and started over, no big deal. Now the body has custom chambering. And that battery's done. I have another battery somewhere. <laughs> Don't know where. We'll find it. <laughs> I guess that's it for tonight. Hello, YouTube family and friends and enemies and frenemies and all of you happy people out there who tuned into my channel. Thanks a bunch for doing that, by the way. I have failed miserably to thank you for showing up. Um, I think it's the least I can do to show up as well since you went to the trouble. Uh, as some of you may know, I've had... A, bit of a struggle with shingles over the past couple of weeks and um, I think the last video that my videographer put up was um, that was probably shot about the day before uh, I got my diagnosis and uh, I'm gonna tell you it's miserable stuff it is really really horrible it affected uh, the right side of my face not cool. I mean, I've never been pretty to begin with. I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm I'm okay with that. But uh, there for a couple of days, I looked a whole lot like a bloated corpse that just got pulled out of the river. Uh, it's also affected my mouth and throat, as you can probably hear in my voice. Um, but I've got a guitar to build. And sometimes, you know, you just got to eat the pain meds and go build your freaking guitar, right? So I have tinkered around with Defiant a little bit while I've been under the weather. <clears throat> but um, I decided that today I should probably do a video and show you where I stand. Oh, my progress is actually looking not too bad, I think. I'm I'm a little bit surprised. As I said at the beginning of all of this, I have zero, I'm trying to put down my tripod here, I have zero guitar building experience. I'm, uh, I'm not a, a guitar builder, or haven't been. I had a little bit of woodworking experience as a kid. Most of that, yeah, let's do this again. Most of my woodworking experience was uh, helping my grandpa build benches and chicken coops and stuff like that. And um, I did a whole lot of wood cutting as a kid. We heated our house with a wood stove and, um, oh, I hated the work. It, <laughs> it was hard work because most Saturdays we would cut a truckload of wood for my uncle and then cut a truckload of wood for my grandma. And then we would finally cut a truckload of wood for ourselves. And um, by that third pickup truckload of wood, after you have 
cut the trees down, cut them into logs, uh, piled up the brush, and split the logs by hand. We didn't have any kind of uh, mechanized splitter. Uh, three truckloads of wood like that was a whole lot of work. And so I figure if I'm paying tribute to that part of my life, then I need to go ahead and, and put in the work necessary to get this guitar done. I'm going to just tell you, I feel like ass. Uh, the nerve damage that was done to the side of my face and especially my scalp and the back of my head are um, not, not very visible. Uh, but the way that my doctor explained to me is that every nerve ending that was affected died in, in the process or in the course of the disease. And um, so now all of those nerves have to rebuild new neural nets and, and neural pathways. So the only sensation that they can interpret is pain. So just the slightest touch on what little bit of hair I've got is, is a whole new frontier of pain. It hurts really badly to take a shower, um, to uh, wash my face. Um, so just wanted to share that with you, not trying to get sympathy points. I don't care if you feel sympathy for me or not. Uh, I don't feel sorry for myself, so really you shouldn't. But I'm just letting you know what's going on. Uh, I decided that I would go ahead and do some work on the guitar tonight. Uh, I'm not messing with power tools and pain pills. I made that mistake one time, and that's all the lesson that I need. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah, I've, I've gotten a little bit done. I have a neck and fretboard roughed out. Uh, I think William has probably posted the video by now of me sawing the fret slots by hand. That was, I'm not going to say it was fun, it was interesting. It was something to do, right? Because I'm always so bored. <laughs> oh, yeah. Two people who know me just got that. Um, so, yeah, we're back to the fretboard. I have sort of rough cut it, routed the edge to match the edge of the neck. I probably could take a little bit of the thickness out of that fretboard, but I don't think I'm gonna. It's just under a quarter inch. I think it was like 0.235, and it's pretty consistent. I probably could take a little bit of the thickness out of that fretboard, but I don't think I'm gonna. It's just under a quarter inch. I think it was like 0.235, and it's pretty consistent. So I will bring the um, the back of the neck at the pocket. Yeah, the, does that have a name, this part right here? Oh, I'll bring the jointed part down just about two millimeters, I think. And that should put the fretboard just about flush with the surface of the body. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see with the light here. But that's my plan. And uh, I don't have any clamps that will hold this thing the way that I need it to be held while I'm sanding. So... I do have the body in a state of stasis right now. I've got an initial um, sort of accent coat of stain on it. And I will let that be the cradle for the neck to at least hold it steady. And I've got a little stumac neck call there that's not probably going to be doing much good. But we'll use it to support the other end of the neck. And... So without much further ado, I'm going to go ahead and jump on this radiusing block. Um, 
it is a yep 16 inch radius block because well I like the feel of a 16 inch neck I think it's a pretty good uh, compromise between a super flat radius like a 20 inch radius um, I've got a couple of 20 inch guitars and they're okay they're they're cool if you're a fast player um, flat necks are, are just faster than than curvy necks are but I'm not a fast player I'm not even a good player um, I chord a little bit I play a little bit of lead and um, that's just that's my gig right there my jam so um, I think a 16 inch radius will do the trick on there as you see I've put pencil marks all along the length of the neck and those will let me know how I'm doing at evenly radiusing my neck so I'm gonna set the tripod down over here and give you guys a, a first person perspective almost and we'll get this sandpaper working Okay, that's about what I expected. We're taking off pencil marks along the edge, but not in the center. And that's precisely the way that it should be. Uh, the way I figure it, the edge needs to come down about two millimeters to, uh, to get that total radius going all the way across. Um, you may notice that I put my sandpaper on diagonally. I did that for a reason uh, because I'm using the the shape of the wood block itself as a guide, and um, I didn't want to square up too much with the sandpaper and have that sort of color outside of the lines. So uh, I don't think I'm going to probably bump into my guitar body. And if I do, it won't be enough to like gouge it out or anything. And I, I do have a lot more sanding to do on this. I'll, I'll sand and dye this body at least six more times. And then I'll go in with the, um, the hard wax oil finish and there'll be a good bit of sanding involved with that too. So it's not gonna hurt a lot if, if I do kiss the body with the sandpaper. But I just didn't wanna do it. So I'm not going to do it. And let's go back to sanding. Yay. So I've taken off a good bit on the edges there, all the way up to the, the tippy tippy end. And still the pencil marks there are mostly unmolested. And you can see my skid marks on the, on the block here. But I noticed that the skid marks are a lot heavier on this end than this end. Um, and I can't remember now which of those was pointed which direction. So I need to investigate that. My suspicion is that this end was coming down here. And um, this is where the pencil marks are least touched. So I might need to change up my style just a little bit. I'm going to remark it. And especially mark the sides or the edges because that's where I most need to take material off and go all the way up to the end and the tippy tippy end where my nut will be and the tippy tippy end where my Krasimir Kolev Goliath pickup will be. Guys if you haven't heard the Kolev pickups um, it's spelled K-O-L-E-F and the dude is in Chicago he's a, a pretty small like boutique pickup builder I guess you would call it but um, he's got a bunch of YouTube videos uh, showing off the pickups that he builds and the reason that I chose his pickups okay two reasons I chose his pickups one is because they sound amazing they are just 
they got such nice voices. But thing number two is uh, I want this guitar to be versatile without having a whole lot of hot rod parts and, and crazy stuff on it. And what I found with the Colif pickups is that when you tap the coils on those humbuckers, um, he's got the prettiest single coil sound that I've ever heard in his humbuckers. And uh, surprisingly, they don't make any noise. They're the quietest single coils. Okay, not true single coils. But when you take a coil out, what is it but a single coil, right? They are super duper quiet and just amazingly glassy and chimey. It, the, the voice, especially in the, the mid to upper registers, the voice reminds me of uh, the guys that take the wine glasses and, and play the edge of wine glasses with their fingers. It, it's that clear and crystalline of a voice. The sound is just otherworldly. I want this guitar to have a voice that will absolutely crush rocks, but, you know, it's rock and roll. We're guitarists. We like kissing girls, too. And let me tell you, these Goliath pickups are some serious girl kissers as well as rock crushers. So, there you go. Go check out Colif Pickups. I'm going to sand some more. Oh, by the way, Mr. Filmographer, you didn't hear that part about kissing girls. You had your chance to play guitar and you picked up a camera instead. So, neener, neener. I'm not going to say anything that rhymes with neener, neener. This is a family channel. Okay, my skip marks are a little bit more even now. They look like comets. It's lighter over here and getting darker, and then lighter here and gets darker. So that tells me that spinning them around or spinning it around made a difference. It wasn't just my technique, but it, it must have been the length of cut and everything. So let's do more. Still not getting the edge down here. There must be just a little bit of a twist, not a twist, but a, a little bit of a low spot in this board. That's all right. That's why I've got extra material. I can, I can take some out of the overall thickness and bring it right down to match that. No biggie. Okay, so I have almost no pencil marks left and my paper has skid marks that are starting to join up in the middle um, with the actual disappearance of most of the pencil marks I know that I am really 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 close to a 16 inch radius now. But I don't know exactly how close. I don't have a radius gauge. But I do have an old pencil. And I can mark up my fretboard some more and go back to work with my sandpaper. And when these marks are gone, evenly and when my skid marks on the sandpaper meet in the middle then I will know I have achieved a 16 inch radius or I will have a strong suspicion that I've achieved a 16 inch radius probably won't be perfect okay I 
have done things that weren't perfect before. Still got pencil marks down near the body and yeah, they are waning in the middle of the neck. They're just about gone up at the top. So that so my battery died. <laughs> it's been a day. It's been a couple of weeks, you know. Um so as the battery crapped out on me, I was experiencing an epiphany. I've got two radius forks. I have a 16 inch, which you saw, and I have a 10 inch, which, well, now you see. And I kind of listened to what I was saying about the use for the different radii and <clears throat> it occurred to me that, well, this is my creation, so let's get creating, right? I'm going to do it my way and just the existential leaning in me said, let's do a compound radio. So, what I have done is reduce the fretboard to 16 for the entire board and then took the 10 inch on sanding block and radius about the first seven frets to somewhere in the neighborhood of 10. Well, I went a little stronger back at the first couple of frets and then lightened up as I was coming forward. And so that should give me a pretty gentle transition from a fret radius that's comfortable to cord with. And then a radius that's a little bit more comfortable for lead playing in the part of the neck where a lot of lead playing happens. Um, it occurred to me also that I have seen, I don't know where, but I've seen on some other guitars, and I liked it, this bit of a chamfer uh, going from the neck into the pickup area. And so I used a sanding spindle, I guess, to round that out. I think I need to work it a little bit more. That line is not perfectly straight and parallel yet with the fret line. I don't want it to look sloppy because that's probably a detail that will show pretty strongly. It'll be pretty near the focal point of the guitar. So, started with just a little bit of preliminary neck shaping as well and I've got yeah there's some better light I've got this dude managed down to about one millimeter of walnut neck showing between the body and the fretboard so I will take just a teeny bit more off of the back of the neck and get that pretty well flush and then I'll take it all apart and we'll start sculpting the neck and body both I'm trying to get close to a finished product I'm really happy with how my neck joint turned out that oh, was just pure luck but I did continue my neck taper all the way to the end so that when I set my neck in place and used 
particle board or MDF board along the sides to outline it and create sort of a temporary um, router template. Um, it transferred that shape onto the body. I did, I don't think I recorded this, but when I cut the neck pocket, um, I had my, we'll pretend that this is not just a piece of poplar, but is my MDF board. Um, anyways, I set two pieces, or clamped two pieces of that alongside my neck. And then, well, didn't have to worry about where the bottom was going to be because I already had a pickup route cut into there. So, yeah, I think I just did the sides. But once those were done up and um, I was able to mark exactly where they would be, then I took the neck out and used the masking tape and super glue trick to reconnect the wood on either side of my neck pocket. And then to make sure that it would be good and tight, I lined the inside of that with um, a couple of strips of masking tape that got me down smaller than the actual opening. Even though my router guide was following the, the wood to cut the the route or the pocket had a little challenge while I was routing the edge of the fingerboard or yeah I guess routing the edge of the fingerboard to match the, the width of the neck uh, never occurred to me that cutting fret slots before shaping the neck would be a bad idea but it was because my router caught you see where the grain on the wood here kind of makes a swoop there my router caught that figure in the wood right at the edge of this fret slot and it gouged out this chunk that used to be there so yeah it took out that whole big piece of wood Luckily, I was already, or not already, but I was a wee bit strong on my fretboard width there, and um, I had plenty to spare, almost, so there was just a, a little bit of a gap that was left, and I have gone in with some super glue and some of the shavings from, or some of the dust from radiusing my neck and filled that little gash there. Yeah, just wondering for the rest of you guys who do this either as a living or you've been doing it for a long time as a hobby, do you find that a really large percentage of your guitar building work is actually guitar repair because it seems to me that that's what I'm getting into. Ah, there's my happy face. This is my LOL face. Yeah, yeah I, I think what I'm discovering on my personal journey here is that guitar repair is going to be the focus of most of my work. Um, there, there's a lot of fun to be had. There's a lot of um, learning to be had for, for sure in the sculpting and, and creating of a guitar. But <clears throat> I guess ultimately you have to be a bit of a mechanic, a repairman, if you're going to do this. I'm glad to be learning these skills. They're not what I expected to be getting into at this stage of the game. Honestly, I had expected by now to have a finished guitar and to be working 
more on setup than anything. As it turns out, something I learned from Daniel at Unquendor Guitars. Uh, I've mentioned him before. If you haven't looked at his channel, you should. Uh, the guy does remarkable work. And he's he's a pretty existential builder. I mean, he, he definitely comes in it with an engineer's mind and with a plan. But um, he does a lot of his creation on the fly. And I like that. I, I like the flexibility of uh, being able to make a mistake and never miss a beat. You know, just keep your pace and come on with it. And maybe what you end up with isn't exactly what you had in mind to begin with. But you can be adaptable and, and create sometimes better things out of the little mistakes that we make. We, and I just included you, I can be adaptable and make better things from the mistakes that I make. And I, I think probably you can too. <clears throat> there's, there's for sure a lot of science and a lot of math and a lot of engineering that goes into this. It's way more, way more than I ever anticipated. Would never have believed that it takes math to build a guitar. I mean, outside of measuring it and knowing how long it is and will it fit in the case when it's done. Um, but it turns out that, you know, those fractions that somebody tried to teach me a hundred years ago, well, they mean something now. And being able to convert fractions to decimals means something now. And being able to convert inches to millimeters means something now. And, um, it's nice to have those various languages available that that I can access when when something just doesn't measure up right in, in inches. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm metric god or anything. I'm certainly not. But having that metric tool at my disposal is really nice because, you know, sometimes... <laughs> okay. I'll just be real straight with you. Oh, I get confused when I look at a ruler and uh, try to figure out which marks are the 16ths and the 8ths and the 32nds and the 64ths. And, well, my eyes aren't what they used to be. I can't always see those tiny little lines. And I don't like to just sit there and count. 164th, 264th, 364th, 460th. It's, it's trudgery. It's, it's unpleasant. But if I can pull out a metric ruler or flip that ruler over and hit it with some millimeasure, <laughs> that's, that's a helpful tool to have. It, it doesn't seem, you know, fancy or, particularly insightful even to me to consider that being able to measure both metric and SAE. I don't know what that stands for, do you? Oh well, being able to measure in both inches and millimeters and well, extrapolate and interpret between the two and make those conversions almost on the fly. It's pretty helpful. Um, let's see, while I'm getting philosophical here, what else? I don't know. There's so much. I actually missed you guys. Not that I can see any of you or, or um, have much interaction with any of you, but um, I don't know, this, this whole exercise has been pretty cool. Um, stepping out of my comfort zone, not only in terms of building a guitar, but being in front of a camera. Gosh, um, I have always, always, always hated to be in front of a camera. And probably a lot of you are the same way. 
oh, I mentioned before, I know I'm not pretty. I don't make for good uh, TV viewing. Oh, it's just the way it is. And I've always been insecure about that. I've always, always hated having my picture taken or being on video. But, um, well, I got to say thanks to Ben for uh, reaching into a shell and, and yanking my big ass out. <laughs> um, I wouldn't have thought that that could be done. But, you know, this, this contest is for a wonderful cause. And I think in addition to the, the stated cause, it, it creates a lot of community. It uh, creates a lot of opportunity for those of us who ordinarily might be, well, in competition with each other. Not that we're not in competition, but um, in financial competition and business competition with each other to sort of reach through the, the screen and, you know, extend the hand and uh, learn from each other, develop from each other, and teach each other. I really appreciate some of you guys that are teaching teaching me so much now. Um, let's see, who should I shout out to? Texas Toast Guitars. Um, I found out today or yesterday that they're judging the contest so well, this is going to sound pretty kiss ass I'm sure but those are good guys and they are amazingly generous with with their inclination to share knowledge and um, they've probably saved me a whole lot of money already because they have they've taught me techniques that never would have dawned on me and and I've I've seen them use methods that probably would not have been my first choice, but they really make sense after I see what they're doing. And um, I could see me making a whole lot of mistakes getting to the point where I would be, uh, be able to figure out for myself how to do the things that those guys teach me how to do. Of course, Ben has been amazing. That guy is, he's hilarious. It's, it's so fun to see an intellectual with his brain going 800 miles an hour. Uh, that's 1,430 kilometers per hour, per hour for those of you in the UK. And you will get ticketed for that in Edinburgh. So, don't don't drive 1430 in Edinburgh. Uh, but yeah, that guy is is just poetry in motion. I love to watch the way that that he flows with some of his mistakes and that he takes ownership of those mistakes. And even if they're not mistakes, sometimes the way that he does something and it comes out, the way that it should have, but it turns out not to look quite the way that he wanted it to. Um, seeing his response to those situations has been really helpful because there have been so many of those opportunities with this build. I'm sorry, I've got to move you around here a bit. From, from the very first with my build, you know, I, I ordered my template twice and it did not arrive the first time and it did not arrive the second time um, and I got to the point where I needed to be building the guitar I had to be on it and I, I still didn't have a template um, so I found a guitar that I've had since 1993 and I love it it's a uh, Carvin Oh, DC-127 12-string. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. I should show it to you guys sometime. It, I call it Sandy because it's got a natural um, quilted maple finish, and it must be a 5A or master grade uh, quilt because there's just so much depth in the, in the top of that guitar. Um, 
and it it looks even after 30 years uh, it's practically flawless and it looks like uh, well a sandy ocean bottom as seen through just a couple inches of water the finish on it still looks wet it's it's that good a finish it's that well made a guitar stays in tune amazingly but um it's one of my favorite guitars and i decided to do defiant as sort of a tribute to that one um, so i traced it and i made a template uh, based roughly on the shape of the dc-127 uh, I sculpted the, the hips on it a little bit, made it lean forward quite a bit more than, than the carbon guitar does. And I'll be using a completely different geometry and setting mine up. I'm, I'm building a 30.2 inch scale baritone guitar, not a 25 and a half inch scale 12 string guitar. So a lot of things will change. I'm, I'm definitely not copying the DC-127. But it was Ben and some of his on-camera goofs that sort of educated me that I can take a situation that isn't ideal and isn't what I was hoping to work with and could make the best of that. And I think, honestly... I think I'm going to end up with a better guitar than I would have if I had gone with my original plan to use a PRS template. So, told you about Ben, told you about Daniel at Unquindor Guitars. Said hey to the Texas Toast guys. Hey guys, well, go Texas. I like Texas. I got family in Texas. They're the best family. Um, Oh, family in North Carolina and Tennessee and uh, Colorado and South Dakota and Idaho and Oregon and Washington. If you're watching this, um, you're the greatest family too, honest. I, I'm, I meant to include all of you. I just accidentally said Texas is the best because it is. I'm, I mean, just... I accidentally said it, not because it is at all, except that it is. As I sit here digging my mouth with my, no, digging my grave with my mouth, I'm not digging my mouth with anything. But my mouth is still so freaking sore from this damn shingles that, um, no, I, I can't even dig some damn ice cream with it right now. So anyway, I'm getting myself in trouble. And it's probably time to end this video. Because let's see, we're at 24 minutes now. William doesn't like long videos. Okay. So this is it. That's enough of my philosophizing.